Four False Teachings That Christians Should Run Away From We are warned in the Holy Bible time and time again against false teaching and doctrines of devil. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. There are many of these heresies being preached in our day, and we need to watch out against them. Let's consider four of these teachings so that we can do well to avoid them. 1. Teaching number 1. Jesus is the Son of God, but He is not God. This is one of the ideas presented by the New Age movement. The New Agers see Jesus as the greatest creature of God. They regard Him only as a great teacher and nothing more. Similarly, it is a dangerous doctrine that Jesus is the Son of God, but not God Himself. This is not what the Bible tells us. Jesus is God, and Scripture highlights that clearly. In John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus said that He and His Father are one. John chapter 1, verse 1 also tells us that from the beginning, the Word was. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, we understand that Jesus is the Son of God and the Word of God. This means that Jesus is God because the Word was God. The reason why this doctrine leads people to hell is because the doctrine you believe in about Jesus Christ is literally a heaven or hell issue. You can be wrong about Christian eschatology. You can be wrong about baptism. You can be wrong about tithe. You can be wrong about a lot of doctrines. But the one doctrine you cannot be wrong about is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Because if you are wrong about the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you are following another Jesus Christ. The Bible even speaks of another Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you received a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Jesus is not a good man or just a good teacher. Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is quite literally God. When you put the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ on, you are putting on the righteousness of God on. You have to do business with Jesus. You must deal with Him. He is God. When He was walking on this earth, He forgave sins as God. I cannot forgive you of your sins because I am not God. I don't have the authority to. Only God does, and Jesus is God. We need Jesus to enter into heaven. His righteousness alone is the entrance into heaven. Your own righteousness will send you to hell. This is why Jesus had to come. He put himself in the form of a man, yet still being God. He was absolutely God as much as his Father is God, and he was absolutely human as much as his mother is human. This is what puzzles people. That is what we mean when we talk about the Incarnation. That's what we mean when we talk about the fleshing of deity. That's what we mean when we talk about the tabernacling of the Word. 2. Teaching number 2. We are little or mini gods. The belief that we are little gods was popularized by false teachers in the New Agers. The idea is that because we are children of God, we are also mini gods and can obtain anything we please because we share in the divine nature of God. This idea is built around materialism. It makes believers to focus on getting money, fame, and material wealth at all costs. They put forward the idea that Jesus died so we can have all we want here on earth. That's not true. Jesus did not die so you can buy a new car or a flashy wristwatch. Jesus died to save you from the flames of hell. And on that final day, you will see billions of people who have rejected Christ being cast into the lake of fire. You will truly appreciate what Jesus did for you and I on the cross. A car will be meaningless in comparison to avoiding the fires of hell. The material stuff that we often pray for 
will be completely and utterly meaningless when you see billions of people being cast into the lake of fire on the last day. The mini-God theology attempts to equate us with God. This doctrine may sound good to itching ears. However, the Bible teaches us that God is holy, righteous, omnipresent, and omniscient. Yet man is sinful and has only been made blameless before God through the death of Christ, not our own innate divinity. If man is equal to God, he ought to be omnipotent and omniscient as he is. Any doctrine that teaches that we are gods in an attempt to make us amass wealth, fame, and have things is unscriptural. Teaching number three, all roads lead to heaven. One of the toxic teachings circulating in our day is that it is narrow-minded to think that Jesus is the only way to the Father. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can approach the Father except through him. But false teachers have explained that this statement only applies in the context of what Jesus was saying to the disciples at the time. They also argue that Jesus' statement was only directed to his disciples and should not be generalized. However, this does not in any way align with the scripture. There are not many roads to heaven. There is just one way, and that is Jesus Christ. That right there is the Christian faith. The Christian faith is dogmatic. That is biblical faith. It is uncompromising. That is true biblical faith. It does not negotiate. It does not leave room for interpretation. In other words, no Jesus, no heaven. In John chapter 3, Jesus told Nicodemus that except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, the idea that all roads lead to heaven is erroneous, and any church or pastor who is preaching this doctrine is a wolf in sheep's clothing. This doctrine has its roots in universalism. Universalism is the belief that ultimately everybody will be saved. And that is a lie according to the Bible. Universalism suggests that those who reject God's provision of salvation through his son will be saved. In other words, a person does not need the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That is what universalism is inferring. Teaching number four, prosperity gospels. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 8 through 9 says, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Most present-day messages are out of alignment with Scripture. There are several false teachers out there who teach people how to get rich quick. They are more concerned with people filling their churches rather than people filling heaven. The prosperity gospel treats God as a genie in a bottle. But that's not God. You can't rub him and tell him, Lord, I want you to do this. You can't force the Lord Jesus Christ to do anything. And your relationship with the Lord should not be based on the things that God does for you. But that is the prosperity gospel. It is a gospel centered around what the Lord can do for you. Prosperity Gospels make people become more materialistic. They ask you to believe in Jesus and you will get rich or buy a new car. But this is not the Gospel. The Prosperity Gospel makes people focus on mundane things at the expense of eternity. The Prosperity Gospel encourages you to lay up treasures here on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal whereas the true gospel encourages you to do the exact opposite. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Do not lay up yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our hearts should be with the Lord Jesus Christ. God is concerned about your heart. Remember, the Lord said to the prophet Samuel that he looks at the heart. And if you remember, Jesus said one of the two greatest commandments is, love the Lord your God with all your heart. This is it. 
God is interested in your heart, and a person who prescribes to the prosperity gospel, their heart is not in love with God. Their heart is in love with this world and the things of this world. If God did nothing more for you in your life than giving you the free gift of salvation, that is more than a person could ever ask for because that gift of salvation is an eternal gift. It is a gift that is priceless. The Basis of Satan's Deception John chapter 8, verse 44 Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Despite the fact that we know, from the words of Christ, that the devil is a murderer and a liar from the beginning, many believers still fall for his deceptions. The devil has never ceased to deceive people. He has deceived a lot of people, and he is still deceiving many more every day. The reason the deception of Satan thrives so much is that it is based on what I'd call half-truths. No one would fall for the devil's deceptions if they were not appealing in the first place. The devil does not possess the power to force people to sin. He only entices people through deception. He deceives people by perverting the truth. He deceives people by twisting the truth. He deceives people by corrupting the truth. He distorts the truth. That is, his truth is mixed with lies. For example, the devil can tell you something that is 95% true, but that is also 5% lie. Everything he does has truth mixed in with lies. The fraction of lies that the devil mixes with the truth will eventually become the virus that eats up the entire system. Every time the devil attempts to deceive someone, there is always an element of truth in what he presents. And that is the reason so many people fall victim to his deception. He is a master at smuggling lies. No matter how great the truth is, if the devil successfully smuggles lies into it, regardless of its being the tiniest fraction, the individual becomes a victim. Jesus told the Pharisees that they were of their father, the devil, because the devil had no truth in him since the beginning. He is a liar and the father of lies. The devil began his lying ministry from the Garden of Eden, and up till now, he is good at it. That is the reason we need discernment, in order to not become victims of his deceptions. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He does not come smelling of smoke, with 666 tattooed on his forehead, with horns and a pitchfork in his hands. He comes as an angel of light. He comes as a minister who preaches a watered-down, feel-good version of the gospel. He comes as a friend who attempts to get you to doubt your faith. He doesn't come screaming, I am the devil. No, he comes as a minister of the gospel who preaches false doctrines that are appealing to the flesh and to our human frailties. That is how he comes. Let's consider the first deception of the devil on earth, according to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, which reads, Now the serpent has more subtle than the beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In this scenario, the deception of the devil was that Eve would not die as God stated in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. However, he supported his lies and deception by the truth that they would know good and evil. And that was exactly what happened to them. Unfortunately, they died spiritually, now having the knowledge of good and evil. There was a kind of knowledge God forbade Adam and Eve, and it was the knowledge of good and evil. The devil was truthful by saying they would have the knowledge of good and evil, but he smuggled in a lie into the truth by saying they will not surely die as God said. One of the great dangers of falling into the devil's deception is that the consequences are devastating. That little fraction of a lie the devil told Eve was what led to the spiritual depravity of the entire human race. And this is something we all need to be careful of. Look at sin. The devil will lie to you and say, Look at these people who are committing the same sin you were tempted to commit, but they are okay. And he will encourage you to go on and just commit that sin. But this is deceptive, because someone is committing a sin and is appearing to be getting away with it does not mean they are getting away with it. One thing you need to remember is that you cannot make a fool out of God. God cannot and will not ever be mocked. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Notice how this verse starts by warning you not to be deceived. Be not deceived. Don't fall into this false sense of illusion that you can sin and get away with it. We all need to have a reverential fear of the Lord. A reverential fear of the Lord to know Him as a holy God, who instructs us and commands us to be ye holy, for I am holy. Fear God. The judgment of God can sometimes come so quickly upon a person that they won't have the opportunity to repent. Judgment came upon Ananias and Sapphira so quickly, so quickly. And their story should be a lesson to all of us. Ananias and Sapphira are an example of how quickly life can end. In Matthew chapter 4, the devil also came to lure Jesus into temptation and we can find some element of truth in what he said. Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. First, the devil pointed out the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. He did not oppose the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. He only wanted him to prove it in a wrong way. Second, the devil knew that Jesus had the power to turn stones to bread. Jesus did not disprove that fact. But Jesus knew that what the devil wanted was for him to put God to test on the basis of his spiritual position. The devil was not confused about Jesus' authority. He only wanted to deceive him to use it wrongly. 
That was the same thing he wanted Jesus to do when he asked him to jump down from a cliff, claiming that angels will bear him up. The devil quoted scriptures for Jesus, and the word of God is true. The scriptures he quoted were true, but he smuggled some fractions of deception into them. The same pattern of deception that the devil used against Adam and Eve was exactly what he employed against Christ. But Jesus was discerning enough to know at what the devil was aiming. He was not interested in Jesus' testimony, but in his failures. Allow this to be a warning. The devil quotes Bible verses. Just because you hear someone throw a Bible verse here and there does not mean they are from God. They could be an agent of the devil. Know the Word of God. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Live a life filled with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Don't rely on any one specific person for your teaching. Ultimately, depend on the Word of God. As you read, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you the Bible. Half-truth is in no way better than a complete lie. You see, one of the reasons the body of Christ suffers a spiritual setback is because of several imbalances in our doctrines. And I see this as one of the tactics of the devil to make us derail completely off the divine track in the fullness of time. It is the truth that will make us free, not half-truths. The devil is out there to cause confusion. Be not confused.